Hello, I'm joined today by Stefan van Hastel, who is CTO at Nokia Fixed Networks. And we're going to be talking about fiber broadband. Stefan, so looking at today's fiber market, what have been the major changes you think over the last few years, say? Well, Ken, the, the big change has really been that literally everyone is building, uh, from telecom operators to cable MSOs to infrastructure builders to investors. And not only are operators across the globe investing, we also see enormous sums in government grants being pledged. And this basically underscores the fact that everyone realizes we need high-speed fiber broadband. On top of that, XGSPOM or 10 gig POM has become the mainstream technology much sooner than anyone had anticipated. For example, at Nokia, we're already shipping more XGS than regular GPON in North America, and we expect the same transition to occur across the globe in the next 12 months. We also see a fundamental shift in how fiber is being used. Okay, uh, a shift. What, what, what do you mean by that exactly? It's the, the growing realization that the fiber to the home network is not just for homes. Uh, rather, it's a fiber infrastructure that passes every street, that passes every building, and as such, it can be used not just to connect homes, but also to connect businesses, to connect smart cities, to connect cell sites. Basically, it's the realization that fiber can be used for everything. Okay, and is this change, is it primarily being driven by technology advances? Yes and no. Uh, so yes, on the technology side, if you think about it, fiber is really a fantastic technology. Uh, it's going to last forever. It's future proof. You can increase the speeds by upgrading the endpoints. You don't have to touch the actual fiber. It's also the greenest and the most efficient way to deliver gigabit speeds and beyond to millions of homes. So for the first time ever, we actually have this massive capacity everywhere. And this, is co this combines with a second technology trend, uh, the emergence of software-defined access networks. And basically software-defined access networks allow you to slice and program the network. It means that this massive capacity that you have going to every home and every business, you can actually slice it up. Uh, you can use it to deliver different services. You can even have different service providers come in and use a slice of the network to deliver an innovative service. But it's not just a technology, it's also the business case. Uh, obviously, the fact that you can use an existing fiber to the home network uh, to connect different types of users, businesses, for example, rather than building multiple parallel networks, results in cost savings. And this business case works both ways. So on one hand, uh, you, will have, you will achieve TCO savings uh, for your business services or for your mobile transport, because you can use a network that's already there. But you also improve the business case for the fiber access network, because you add more users and more services, more traffic uh, onto that network, which means that the cost per user or the cost per bit is going to come down. OK, and you mentioned various technology advances. Now, let's just be clear. Is this technology available today? So 10 gig is, is now the technology of, of choice and is widely available. 25 gig is already available today, and it's actually available on the same equipment that used to deliver 10 gig. As such, it gives you an extremely easy upgrade path beyond, 20, beyond 10 gig. We're already working on 50 gig, and this will become available towards the middle of the decade. And the same advances in digital signals processing that are required for 50 gig can also be used for even higher speeds. For example, we've already shown that 100 gig POM is within reach and have demonstrated a 100 gig POM demonstrator at a number of uh, occasions. This all sounds trivial, uh, but of course that's not the case. Uh, for broadband applications, not only do you need to achieve those higher speeds, but you also need to do it at a cost point that scales for millions of endpoints. And that is, that is really the big challenge. Now, if you look at software-defined access networks, those are now also being mature and, and being deployed. It's, it's taken a while. Uh, industry has been talking about this for some time, but it's a fundamentally different way to, to operate and run your network. So it takes some time to make its way into networks. Uh, we're now there uh, because of the open interfaces and the standard data models uh, that, that we use in a software-defined access network. It actually makes it ideal for use cases like network slicing. Uh, it allows different services or providers to program the behavior of their slice of the network, and they basically can do whatever they want on that, on that infrastructure. Okay, Stefan, perhaps a, a bigger picture now. Can you explain how operators, end users, society, and indeed the whole planet can benefit from fiber rollout of the sort you describe using advanced technologies? 
I'd say we're, uh, we're finally about to achieve Nirvana, uh, where a single fiber access network can be used for everything. Uh, it's a more efficient way to connect more people and more business. Uh, it means a higher speeds and improved services for everyone. Uh, it means more money for operators because they can reduce the total cost of ownership by consolidating onto a single network. And on top of that, it's green and will last for generations. So it also helps the planet. Okay, thanks, Stefan. Thank you very much for those insights. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ken.